paid $1,000 for this and wants it spruced up for her kid. Naturally, I'm gonna have to give it the Hawk Pro treatment here. And I'm dealing with a lot of things I can't control, like flaked off coating or whatever that is. The plastic coating or just the plastic that was on this part of the driver's side door is gone. And look at how nasty. I mean, imagining how old this vehicle is, that black line there next to the plastic vent is actually going to be some hard ice melt. And then look at these leather seats. Look at where the butt indentation is there. I mean, it's just... <clears throat> Some of this damage, as I would learn to find out, uh, was very permanent and could not be restored by cleaning. And that's important for detailers out there to communicate with their customers that I can clean as perfectly as possible, but I can't clean damage away. So look at how dirty th those carpets are, especially along the sides. And wait till you see the back. Oh, you know, just dirt lining every floor mat, that nasty coffee stain or whatever that is down the side. I mean, just trust me when I say this was nasty. It was lived in. I know you can see it, but, you know, certain vehicles don't even convey so much when you're, uh, but you're getting a sense of it now. I'm, I'm zooming in. I mean, it's, it was just a tough one for me. And I'm going to go step by step with with you by my side on kind of how I tackled it. So there you've got the general walk around of the vehicle. I'm going to focus on the interior for this, but I just do want to show you the outside because I'm right at the end. I'll show you how it all turned out. And I just want you to see the details up close here. So first step here is just to get these floor mats out of the vehicle. Um, you know, obviously you want to wear some nitrile gloves. For a vehicle like this, in hindsight, probably wearing a respirator would have been a good idea. You can see how dirty this is. You can see how black parts of that floor mat were. So it's just going to be a task. I've got my air compressor hose here. And, you know, basically the, the task here is dry soil removal first. It is so much easier to get the dry soil out first rather than to create mud and then try to extract it or to blow it out. So get the dry soil out first. So I'm going to utilize a combination of my air compressor, that air tool there that you see poking around, and my rigid vacuum. Some of this is just going to take time. I mean, sometimes I use my leaf blower, you know, to blow a bunch of crud out uh, as well. Here I'm trying to be a little more strategic, a little more pinpoint. And again, you see those like black lines around the uh, the carpet. I'm not sure why they're not white, and someone out there can probably attest to this. And you know, it's like at some point, like you, know, you can't know everything, and you can't even pretend to know everything. So I don't know—is that mold? Is that what ice melt turns into later on? I don't know. But I just know that it was very firm, and we had to address it as ice melt later on. But just pay attention to all the, the clouds of dust when they do blow up into the air. Um, a lot of dry soil in this vehicle. Um, and this just gives you a sense of sometimes the time that is required to do the job. So here I am. I'm going to move the camera for you and, and show you what I do. Let's see. Moving the seat back if I can. Nope. This is going to be a an annoying vehicle that you have to turn the engine on to move the seat back, which happens from time to time. Uh, but there's always something, right? It's all good. Uh, but yeah, pay attention. Like on the left-hand side next to that air vent, you see that black line. So that's definitely some kind of moldy ice melt. And correct me if I'm wrong, guys, what that is. But the beauty in the air compressor is you can get into all these nooks and crannies. So just spewing out compressed air and, and agitating it. You know, I'm using this to agitate um, into edges and corners. Now, this is the passenger side seat. And I want you to pay really close attention to it because this gets kind of more toward that neglect I was telling you about. See all these like black dots on the left side of your screen there? And then how nasty it is in that vent. Eventually, we're going to deal with those. But right now, it's dry soil removal. But just if you're going to stick around to the end of the video, and I promise you there's a transformation here, remember this side of the vehicle and what it looks like. Because we made it look real nice. And you'll see how. But again, this is just a real demonstration of how long does it actually take to do this work? You know, oh, I found some cards in the, you know, in between the seat, whatever. Here is a really important lesson. I've tried a bunch of different things. If you have ice melt, if you're in cold weather climates, pay attention to urine neutralizer. It's got a very low pH and it works on urine salts. It does 
what you need it to do. So I've diluted it here, but do you see that, that kind of circle of white? That circle of white is actually rock hard. And so it's ice melt. So I've diluted this, I think either, you can either use it straight or I think I use it like three parts water, one part concentrate, hot water. And what I'm doing here is less about spot treating the areas that I know there's ice melt, although that's kind of what I'm doing, everything that's dark. Look at that foot pedal, how dark it is down there. Um, anything that could possibly be ice melt, and I'm, what I'm doing instead of targeting a certain area here, I'm targeting all the notorious areas where I find it in vehicles in Utah. So corners, right along the edges of floor mats, of course they're over on the right hand side of where your right foot is by the by the, the driver's pedal, so if you're actually sitting in there, the right-hand side. And then I might hit the urine neutralizer a couple other spots where I think I, I might have seen it in my initial kind of pass-through of this carpet. Um, urine neutralizer is a low pH. It's my understanding that ice melt being salt is kind of a higher pH, so you got to neutralize it. Uh, you do want to agitate it, and then you want to extract it. You want to rinse it out before you even clean the carpets. And once you've extracted this out of the carpet, so you you spray it, you give it some dwell time, then you agitate it with just water is all you need. You just want to get most of the crud out. That's when you can go about cleaning your carpet with a pre-spray and a neutralizing rinse. So this is a little redundant. This is a little crazy. Like, why am I doing every spot? But I'm, I'm just aware this is an older vehicle and I'm trying to take back years of possible neglect. I just used a drill brush process. to get some of that urine neutralizer into the carpet, really working some of the properties that are going to neutralize whatever it does. Neutralizing the salt, um, whatever it does, it does well. And now I'm going to try to extract it. So I've got the extractor all fired up here, and I'm just going to kind of get some lighting for you, finagle my way in here, and... Pretty much with your neutralizer, um, I've already agitated it. So what you're trying to do, and gosh, is that is that hot? What you're trying to do with the urine neutralizer is basically break it up. So if your hot water is not hot enough and you haven't been able to break it up at this point, that's I'd suggest using a steamer. I've got a couple steamers on the fritz right now, so I'm just trying to make it work with super hot water from this amazing industrial carpet extractor. Um, but what will typically happen with urine neutralizer is it'll foam up, and you just kind of want to extract until you see the foam go away. See the foam that I'm agitating with my fingers there? That says the urine neutralizer is still there, and I'm feeling with my fingers, I'm feeling some hard ice spots. So I know, uh-oh, like, don't extract just quite yet. Like, I better take care of the, these ice melt spots. Um, so I'm going to give it a little more juice because I'm sensing there might be more ice melt than I thought. And then we'll just kind of go from there. Um, obviously, I'm continuing to spray here. And if I have a gift of gab, it's a blessing and a curse. So I'll just keep on talking through this. Maybe this gives you a sense. I mean, this is the real world. You want to detail? You want to learn how to do this stuff? So here I am. I'm back. And I decided, gosh, the steamer's on the fritz. What can I do? I can give it more chemical. I can give it more agitation, right? So I'm using this drill brush with... Uh, I think it's the Rotovac or Rota brush attachment from Excellent Supply, so it's pretty gentle. I could probably even go more aggressive. Um, but you see me agitating a lot of foam up there, and I'm pressing pretty hard. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to get results in the moment because I'm feeling that ice melt just stuck in there. And again, this is where I would typically work with a steamer. <gasps> the magic steamer, I told you guys. So this is the steam. This is what you really want to do. Got the steamer working. You can see the little, um, if you look at the actual handle, the button is like jutting out, probably dangerously with exposed cords. That's why I said the steamer's on the fritz. But I couldn't get this stuff to move. So I just said, you know what, I'm going to fire up the steamer, see if it works. I need to send it in. I just, I don't know, being stupid and cheap, I guess. I'm like, maybe I can make this last. I don't need a steamer. And then you need it. So I'm just, I'm blasting every possible spot that I think has kind of stubborn, pernicious ice melt. And yeah, when you're using that steamer, try to open a door on the other side of the car or you are going to get just a tsunami of wind. Is that a, can you have a tsunami of wind or clouds or whatever? I don't know. Here we go. Lots of, lots of steam happening here. This is uh, the uncut director's version. 
So I feel like I've broken up a lot of this with steam now. And the next logical step is let's get the extractor going. Let's see if we can't extract what I just agitated. So here we go. And the hot water. This is what I love about this particular extractor. You know, I've got smaller ones, but what's great about this one is it's just the PSI is super high and the heat is super good. So before I do my bio break, which is my pre-spray, I like to hit every noticeable stain with a spotter. So we've moved on from the driver's side, we're on onto the passenger side now. This is end cap spot, and I've done a video about end cap spot. It's great for headliners, but it's also great for spot treating. So before I introduce hot water extraction, right, let's pretend we're starting from zero. We just did dry soil removal, and what do we do next? End cap spot on the visible stains and hit it with the drill brush and watch this transformation. So I recommend when you see spots, after you do your dry soil removal, pre-treat the spots with your spotter, agitate them with the drill brush, like I'm doing right here. There's that nasty little red or brown thing under that vent. I wonder if I'm gonna be able to get it. But I mean, this is pretty cool, huh? You guys seeing these spots just disappear? Obviously the question is, well, where did they go? You obviously want to mop this up and eventually we'll extract it, right? So it's not it's not critical that we get to perfection here. But yeah, you mop it up with the microfiber and look at how amazing that is. Now I notice, because I'm crazy like that, that little stain under the vent, but it looks like it's pretty much gone away. We haven't even hot water extracted yet, my friends. Isn't this a beautiful thing? You guys got to get yourself some of this spotter. I'm telling you. This spotter coupled with... Bio break and flex ice. I mean, if you if you trust me on nothing else, just I've gone down the rabbit hole on carpet cleaning. Like I'm I'm pretty sure that these products are about as good as it gets out there. And if they're not, you know, I've heard of other good brands too. But that's detailing in general, right? There are so many really good products and brands out there that you could do it so many different ways. You're just asking me to spend my time, possibly to curate the good stuff for you. That's why I tell my customers, I'm like, I have an OptiCoat display of like, you know, their maintenance line in my uh, in my lobby, and I was telling a guy the other day, I was like, you can go out and research all the good stuff out there, and you'll find amazing stuff. And maybe this isn't the best, but I'm like, but I've curated it for you, and it really does work, and it's really good. So if you if you value my word at all, and if you if you want to take a lot of time and money out of the equation for for yourself, as trying to figure out how all this works. Um, you can't go wrong with these products, and I'm going to link them all in the description below. Now, I will say, end cap spot's not perfect. I mean, there are certain times when it doesn't get everything, right? So, sometimes that's just going to be life uh, as a carpet cleaner. You just can't get everything. There is a lot going on in these carpets. There's a blue spot, probably like right under the drill right now kind of about a third the way up the carpet, or a third the way up your screen, just a tiny little blue spot, and that never came out. So you win some, you lose some, right? It's just life as a carpet cleaner and a detailer. But I'm telling you, with end cap spot, you can get to things, with, and, and like the bio break, you can get to things that a traditional degreaser just doesn't touch. Like it's just a different part of uh, the equation that it just wasn't designed to clean a lot of the times. Um, degreasers are great for a lot of things, but they just don't always get the stains. So I think at this point I haven't applied my bio break. I'm just using end cap spot because I know how nasty this particular side is. Was that the most disciplined approach? I don't know. Like I said, if I'm going to stick with I pre-treat spots with the drill brush and end cap spot, then I guess I'm going to pre-treat them. So I tried to hit every um, every nasty section, but really this is going to benefit the most from hot water extraction because I think we're kind of reaching the limits of what of what this drill brush is going to do although when you compare this passenger side to how we started it's already um, a world of difference I do love end cap spot you guys I'm telling you it it does the trick pre-treat your stains with your end cap spot from excellent supply great company and uh and then you just go after it, man. Collect your paycheck. Ha, huh, I wish it was that easy. 
20 hours later, maybe I'll be done with this stupid car. I mean, this amazing car. I love this car. My favorite car ever. That's why I've realized, you know, you know, I first got into the business and I and I saw guys who would say, one condition that could make it a more expensive detail is cars five years or older. And I was like, cars five years or older? That's no big deal with that. But as a detailer, I now understand that if you've never had your car detailed in five years, how many days are in a year? 365, right? So multiply 365 times five. And think of how many days that car has existed without a deep clean. And you're going to be asked in a very short amount of time to take back all of that damage. So it's a, it's a big task. So this car, I don't know what year it is, but it definitely felt like it was older than five years. It had like 100,000 miles on it, and I think it had probably sat for a while too. So I don't know. It, it, it had been used and abused. And um, so this is the driver's side. I don't think I've bio-brake, pre-sprayed anything yet. All I've done so far is just hit the MCAP spot and uh, in this particular drill brush. So I'm living by it. I'm doing the end cap spot method and most of this carpet is already looking uh, fantastic. So now I'm just going through and trying to use this compressed air for a final, final, not so final, <laughs> blowing out of the interior. Um, I've already end cap spotted and brushed this carpet, but you can see how much crud is still left over. So yeah, this may not be the most efficient use of my time right now. Maybe just a quick vacuum would have worked, but what I wanted to do was just use this compressed air kind of one final time, do a final vacuum, and then go about treating the carpet kind of like a, a blank canvas, so to speak. Finally gonna do the the bio break, the agitation, and the hot water extraction. So not pictured on camera was me spraying the bio break. Uh, here I am just going about the hot water extraction process and it, it is what it is, you know? You're just trying to basically hit every surface, you know? And, and then uh, also I've got Flex Ice in my extractor. It's a low pH product that uh, should neutralize the bio break that I've sprayed into the carpet. So typically if you're wondering what is a pre-spray, what is bio break, when my carpets are dry and clean, I'll hit it with bio break. It's a high pH pre-spray. It's the best thing I've ever found for deep nasty stains and carpets. Uh, let that dwell for 10 to 15 minutes, agitate it, which I've already done, and then you go about your hot water extraction process with flex ice, something acidic or neutralizing rinse they call it. That's in your extractor solution tank and as you shoot it out through the extractor head um, you're sucking up all the high pH stuff, you're putting in something lower acidic, a lower pH, hopefully whatever is left over is neutralized, but you're trying to get all the high pH stuff out of there uh, in general. You never remove all the residue from carpets, shh, don't tell the customer, but even professional carpet cleaners don't. I don't know about zero res, I don't want to go there, but uh, I will just say that sometimes you just need chemicals to get the job done, and then hopefully you leave it without much chemical residue by cleaning it the right way. So then I'll just mop it up with a towel, then I'll keep extracting, then I'll mop it up, and I'll use a towel, and uh, just kind of managing certain areas um, as they come up. But I, I'm not messing around here. I mean, I'm trying to hot water extract every square inch of this carpet, and if I'm seeing stuff left over, I'll hit it with my end cap spot, re-agitate it again, and then I'll use the tamping method where I'll kind of put the towel down on the carpet, uh, slam down on the, uh, on the uh, uh, microfiber, and then I will uh, hopefully extract some of that into the towel. All right, so real talk, I probably started about 9.30, I don't know. This took me a few hours, but I did some spray and walk away with uh, a product called Urine Stain Remover. It's got peroxide in it. It's when in the carpet cleaning world, you're really trying to get a stain out and you just can't. You leave it and I guess as oxygen works its magic, the stain supposedly goes away. Now you're going to call me a hack. I have to leave for the day. So 
other than a little bit of rubbing right here, which I just did only because I opened the door, um, I'm leaving the windows open so that I can not run the battery out and so that I can uh, get air moving in here. You never want to leave these doors closed as the carpets are drying. Still very wet, but getting better. Um, hopefully some of that hydrogen peroxide or whatever the spray and walk away characteristic of urine stain remover is will help. So um, I'm just going to show you real quick urine stain remover from uh, Bridgepoint Systems with hydroside. So it's a, an odor uh, neutralizer as well. It's part of their urine removal system. Um, it's a supercharged combination of seven ingredients and the oxidizing power of hydrogen peroxide safely remove the most challenging urine stains. And I'll tell you what, as far as hydrogen peroxide goes, I accidentally did this without gloves and I was touching the carpet and it stung. So, I mean, I need to be wearing gloves, that's so stupid. But the reality is there's something working with that hydrogen peroxide that I feel like gave me an irritation on my skin and definitely you can see that. But I left it on the carpets because I really want to let it, um, as it dries, really brighten those carpets up. So I'll be back later tonight. Um, it's a 5.5 pH, so you don't need to extract it afterwards. Um, it's good for carpet spotting and upholstery spotting. So although it's called urine stain remover, uh, it is a spotting chemical that works well. So let's, uh, let's see how it uh, turns out later tonight. And here I'm pulling out the magic eraser because as everybody knows, mystery stains have a way of just appearing and being in those kind of lower sections of the driver's side door where you're you know, pretty likely to get your foot uh, or some kind of smudge on there. And compressed air is your friend. I mean, having a steamer is absolutely amazing and it's already shown why it's crucial. But the compressor, man, without air compressor, uh, without the tool of an air compressor, I don't know what I'd do. So, I mean, this is pretty amazing. You look at how grimy this whole steering wheel was, and you've got to get this magic eraser going with an all-purpose cleaner, <clears throat> because otherwise, it's going to take you forever. Um, certain things come off, certain things don't, right? So, oftentimes, that hazy white film around a lot of your shifter knobs and um, windshield wiper knobs like right there it, it, it uh, you really got to work those and clean them for a while and you got to be careful you don't work them too hard on an old vehicle or you're gonna go all the way through the coating and just fade it permanently so I'm trying to assess here what on the tip of that uh, particular like um, whatever that shifter gear is whatever these are that I'm playing with now you know is that uh, is that a white haze that needs to be cleaned away or is it already gone through the coating so to speak and uh, definitely don't forget about these shifter gears always look at things from different angles you know I look at something from the ground I look at something from the sky or whatever you know I look at something through the windshield I look at it you know I'll put my head by the by the shifter um, in the center console and I'll stare up at the windshield sometimes just to see if there are any streaks in the windshield now I'm finally saying screw this I need some steam I need some air compressor I need to get in all the nooks and crannies and I'm using every trick in the book to get inside of these particular air vents start with some steam then go with some compressed air. And these center consoles, sometimes you just have to get steam in there. I tried an all-purpose cleaner, tried a brush, uh, but when you really need to deliver at the level of a center console, a trashed vehicle, you know, these cup holders, Steam's gonna be your best friend. But you just don't wanna overwet these center consoles either. You don't wanna overwet sensitive areas in a car, which is why I say an air compressor is the number one thing you can have. But a steamer is amazing and, and there's some things you almost can't do without steam. So I'm just kind of finessing this back area now. Cause it's gross. It's like a Alcantara felted carpet thing oh 
Oh, and now I lift this up, and I'm greeted by some nasty center console felt small carpet area inside of the center. I don't know what's going on. I, I'm sort of, at this point, starting to question life choices. <laughs> into this detail far too many hours, but you gotta give everything TLC, and I'm just using that microfiber to mop up as I steam the crud away, the, the, the microfiber's there to mop it up as I go. But do you need a steamer for auto detailing? Not for everything, but certainly for some things, if you wanna do it well. And now I'm just gonna work my way into the back seats here. Don't forget the uh, the back of the seats. I've got some all-purpose cleaner spraying directly onto my Magic Eraser. I don't really like spraying Optimum No Rinse or having Optimum No Rinse sponges. I, I kind of prefer, if you're gonna go to the level of Magic Eraser, put some uh, all-purpose cleaner on there. Do it right. Um, you're there to be aggressive. I mean reasonable but but aggressive and here I am just doing a wipe down of all the leather optimum no rinse and then uh, it looks like I've just got power clean I, I finally decided you know what I can I can understand what kind of leather situation we're in right now and it's it's an SOS I mean this leather is trash so I start with my optimum no I start with my um, Magic Eraser, an all-purpose cleaner, and then I finish with Optimum No Rinse and compressed air. So I'm gonna experiment with this product from Lithium out of Salt Lake City. It's called Leather Love Ultra Premium Elixirs. Designed to save your hide, literally. When leather damage has gone from bad to worse, Leather Love will bring skins back to life with a unique combination of the stuff leathers thirst for. Lipids, essential oils from really weird and exotic places along with other ingredients that will hydrate and bring your seats back from the edge. So the instruction is to use a lint-free cloth, rub a small amount of the surface, and allow to dwell for 30 to 60 minutes. So I'm going to turn my light on here so you can kind of see this and I'm just going to get it onto the, onto the cloth. <clears throat> I'll show you the application process. The seats are just so, so bad that, like, <clears throat> perfection was never the goal. Like, what is this thing, right? I mean, do I go after it? I just didn't want to hit that with a steamer. So, yeah, I mean, this thing isn't perfect, but I think the customer knows that. And this product from Lithium, I'm just applying it into the leather uh, with the hope and a prayer that it can help restore this trash leather. Doing a final uh, vacuum here because that's what you do. Um, I've had air removers in here for hours, getting all the carpets dried out. Um, yeah, I'm just doing that final vacuum, trying to leave it as perfect as possible. I will spot treat a couple more spots now that everything's dried and I can kind of see how it all shook out. End cap spot on just a few more spots, drill brush, Get the towel in there, whatever I have to do to kind of mop up some spots. And it could be that some of these spots are just what they are. But I just am trying to make sure after all this time and energy, I figure, hey, might as well. Don't forget the final window clean. Got my magic eraser, then a wet O&R towel, then a dry towel. I found optimum paint prep as my final step. It does a great job at reducing or removing all streaks but you know if it's a day of the week that ends in Y I've got a new window method so don't worry about that guys uh, here we are finally done all right the exterior quasi makeover on a budget is complete quick gloss enhancement with orange waffle and hyper polish optimum gloss coat I just threw it in there super easy to install you know it's just there's swirls everywhere in this paint direct sunlight but 
it's gonna look nice. And it just, I mean, look, harsh light will reveal the coating still coming off there. But I mean, how about this? Not perfect by any means, but gosh, is that not fairly clean? Yeah, did I miss a pedal here or there? I'm sure I did. Lots of dust accumulating. But, you know, and then lots of marks on here, but I condition the leather. It's just, it's a struggle in here. Um, but yeah, nice and clean. The carpet over there is nice. How about right there? Remember all those coffee stains? Dun 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 dun! Nice and clean. I think they're gonna be happy. I hope I made any money whatsoever on this job. I probably didn't, but at least I have the video documenting a quasi transformation. It's an interesting client when they say they want it as perfect as you can get it, and yet they bring in all this touch-up stuff here. The whole bumper's all just trashed, right? You know? And then there's adhesive stuck in there from glue, like on the interior. I don't know. I never want to see this vehicle again. It's tough when your canvas is such an old, dilapidated, so to speak, vehicle. It's so much easier on a brand new vehicle because your canvas is so optimal, you know? You're just doing some light cleaning. Versus what I couldn't even accomplish, which is pretty heavy duty restoration work. But I hope the customer's gonna be stoked. It's uh, three in the morning, so I better go home. <laughs>